By the end of this video, you're gonna have a solid understanding of the statistics behind when and where you're most likely to hit a bird. Now, I think as an aviator, this is really, really important knowledge to have because yeah, bird strikes are reality of flying. I mean, we share the air with them, um, but I think it's good to know the stats behind it to know when you're more at risk. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna share another uh, video that talks about what birds we most commonly hit here in North America and what happens when you hit them, that sort of thing. I think it's great data to be armed with with, so let's jump in. The information in this video comes from two key places. The first is the FAA. They put out a 100 plus page report on bird strikes and, and bird strike data that I read all of. And the second source is the 2019 North American Bird Strike Conference. Yes, this is a real thing. And yes, I read all 1000 plus pages uh, of slides and everything. It was an interesting morning <laughs> learning probably more than I wanted to about bird strikes, but I distill all of this into this video and the one that I'm gonna link to at the end. So that's where this is coming from. Let's dive in. The first half of this video revolves around when are you most likely to hit a bird? And there's three components to that. The time of year, the time of day, and the phase of flight. Let's start with the time of year. So the FAA has some really interesting data here. They looked at the last 30 or so years worth of bird strike uh, data and history, and they found a couple things. First, there is a disproportionate percentage of strikes that occur during the months of July through October. More than half of strikes occur during these months. Now, I'm obviously not an ornithologist, one who studies birds, um, so I can't I don't know exactly why this is, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments as to your speculation. Is it just because, you know, and again, this data is for North America. So, you know, July through October, that's just when the most favorable climate is for birds to have activity. Is it because they're going into the fall months and starting their migratory patterns, which I, I don't even know if that's true. I, I think that's true. Birds fly south for the winter, right? Uh, but I'd love to hear from you. But that's where most strikes happen during those months. There's also a second wave during uh, the month of May. And then the lowest percentage chance of hitting a bird is in the winter months, December through February, which we're entering into right now as of this filming. So the chances aren't zero, but it's definitely more favorable to not hit a bird in the next 90 days or so. Okay, so that was time of year. What about the time of day? Is there a difference between daytime and nighttime in terms of hitting birds? Well, the same study found this information. About 63% of all strikes occurred during the day. About 30% occurred at night, and then the remaining eight or so percent occurred at dusk or at dawn. Now, I thought this was kind of interesting that it wasn't just split down the middle as a starting point, you know, 50-50 night and day. Uh, and, and one kind of conclusion you might be able to come to is thinking, well, at night, you know, we've got more precautionary things. The airplane is really lit up, got lights everywhere, all that stuff. So is that a, a driving component? And there was an interesting study done by the U.S. Air Force in connection with Clemson, and they found this. They said that birds do not make evasive maneuvers to avoid approaching aircraft with the landing light on. So I think it's interesting to know, at least as a starting point, that the landing light doesn't seem to be um, impacting the lower amount of strikes at night. Now in the video I'm gonna to link to at the end, uh, there's some really interesting bird evasion strategies and technologies that different companies are testing and some of them have to do with light and the light spectrum that birds can see. I thought it was super interesting. We don't have time to cover it in this video, but if you stick around at the end, it'll be in that video that I'm gonna to link to. Okay, and wrapping up this section on when are you most likely to hit a bird is the phase of flight. Going back to the FAA study, I think there's some really interesting stats here. So they found that about a third of all bird strikes occurred during the takeoff run or the landing roll. That's 34% occurring while you're still on the ground. I thought that was really interesting. Another 17% occur while you're in the climb. About 42% happen during the approach. And then the remaining percent occurs when you're in route, in descent, or in some other phase of flight. So I thought this was really interesting for two reasons. One, that a decent percentage of strikes occur still on the ground, like we talked about. And then secondarily, that a disproportionate percentage of strikes occur in the approach phase versus the climb out. Now, this was interesting to me because, you know, like why would it be so much higher on approach versus the climb? Aren't you kind of passing through the same altitudes just in a different phase of flight? Um, and my hunch here, but I'd love to hear your opinion, is that I feel like on the approach, you're typically at lower altitudes for longer lengths of time. You know, think about it when you're on instrument approach. I mean, they might descend you pretty early and, and you'll be flying that approach the whole way versus on your climb out, they might, you know, clear you to your cruising altitude right away uh, or pretty early on. So that's my thought. I, I can't prove that. I don't know, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. So the last part of this presentation covers where you're most likely to hit a bird. And this is where it gets really interesting for me. We're going to cover the altitude, the airports, and the parts of the airplane that you're most likely to encounter a bird strike. 
So starting with altitude, this I think is the most practical part of this whole video as a pilot to know when are you most likely to hit a bird in your altitudes. I don't think you should ever stop looking outside of the airplane and not worry about this, but I do think it's important you know, for task management in your head to be on even, even greater lookout uh, for bird strikes and this information is gonna tell you just that. So off the bat, you'll notice that a large percentage of strikes, about 40%, occur still on the ground. Now, like we talked about earlier, this can include the takeoff, the landing roll, but it could also include things like taxiing or run up or just sitting on the ramp, right? A large percentage occur on the ground. If we go up to about 500 feet AGL, we add another 30% or so uh, of the occurrences, right? So between the ground level and 500 feet above the ground, we're already at like 70% of all strikes occurring. I think this is really helpful information to know. And then if you add another 1,000 feet to it, so up to and including 1,500 AGO, we get about 80% of all strikes. Once you add another 2,000 feet to that, so 3,500 AGL, we're over 90% of all strikes occurring under this. And then if you add another 4,000 feet or so to this, you know, 7,500 AGL, which, you know, a common cruising altitude for me in, in the 182, you get up to 98% of all strikes occurring. So what does this mean? Well, I think this is really helpful. Remember, if you're cruising much higher than that, yeah, only about 2% of strikes occur over those altitudes. But that's not to say you shouldn't look at the air, out the airplane for this. Um, I think you should always be keeping your eyes outside the airplane as much as you can for, you know, for traffic, for birds, for condition of the airplane, like oil leaks, fuel leaks, um, any, anything like that, right? But I do think it's good to know, okay, as part of my task management, I'm probably going to be not as worried about birds at 7,500 feet as I am, you know, in 1,500 feet and below, kind of pattern altitudes, approach altitudes, that sort of thing. I'm really going to be on the lookout because statistically, that's where this is most likely to happen. But as a healthy reminder, I think it's important to remember that the highest reported bird strike in the U.S. for the last 30 or so years was at 31,300 feet. And even higher than that, the highest reported bird strike that I could find on the internet was in 1979 where a bird was hit at 37,000 feet. That's so high. I mean, that's obviously airliner altitude. So these things are out there. They can be hit that high. So you're never uh, in the clear. You always want to be on the lookout. So wrapping up with where you're most likely to hit a bird, if we look at geography, at least for the continental US, the FAA put out this data in 2018. They looked at the airports with the most reported bird strikes per 10,000 operations. So the reason they do that is so they can right size it so airports that have a lot of operations can be apples to apples with airports with uh, fewer operations. And here are the top five airports that they found. I think this is interesting because longitudinally, you know, north south, they they they're kind of uh, similar. They're kind of all in line there. So I don't know if this is because of migratory patterns of birds. Are there just more birds in the Midwest and and the South and such? I don't know, perhaps. Um, but I think is interesting, if nothing else, just to kind of look at this data. Is it going to change your flying behavior? Obviously not. Uh, could it help you in a random trivia battle? Maybe so. I don't know. But I think it's good data to have on hand. So lastly, what part of the airplane is most likely to get hit by a bird? Well, Boeing put out a really interesting study on this, and here's what they found. About 20% or so occurred on the windshield or the nose, 44% were on the engine, 4% were on the fuselage, and 31% were on the wing. Now, why would these be so different than one another? I would love to hear your comments. My gut reaction would be that the engine and the wing would be more detectable, right? Both because I think they're inspected more closely, more regularly, but then also because I think they would be more noticeable, right? Like, like getting a, a small bird ingested into the engine is gonna make a more noticeable impact uh, than hitting a, a little bird on the bottom of the fuselage, right? I think it's just more detectable. So I think it's probably just the amount of data here. I don't know that more birds are actually hitting the engine than the rest of the airplane. I, I just think it might be a reporting bias here as to what they're actually able to detect, but I'd love to hear from you. Now we have a lot of data on when and where you're most likely to hit a bird, but what about what happens when you hit a bird? Like what's the fatality rate? What's the damage rate? Uh, what types of birds are, are we commonly hitting? And I'm glad you asked because I've already summarized all this in another video and I will link it up in the corner and down in the description. Now, once you go to that video, you wanna start about the second half of it because the first half is gonna be a summary of what I've already presented here. And I wanted to, to do this video in kind of a more succinct fashion. But if you want all of that data, I promise you will enjoy that video 
video, go check it out. It'll make you a more informed pilot uh, when it comes to bird strikes and it'll help you um, just be safer, I think, and more knowledgeable, which is, uh, you know, being pilot. That's that's what we're in charge of doing, being safer and more knowledgeable. So I hope that this really helped. Um, for any of, the, any of the data points that I talked about in this video, I'd love to hear your perspective as the why behind a lot of this stuff. I've shared some of my opinions, but I would really, really love to hear yours. So I'll see you guys in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.